What's up, and welcome to my full corn guide. In this video, we'll cover each of corn's attacks, including their frame data and their best uses. Then we'll put the pieces together to form a solid neutral game plan, as well as an advantage state, which includes some of their best combos. And lastly, we'll cover some of their best options for ledge trapping. This video is packed with useful info, so be sure to add it to a playlist such as Watch Later so you can revisit it if needed. And subscribe to stay up to date on the most essential corn strategies. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Forward air is Korn's go-to aerial for approaching at low to medium percentages as it pops your opponent up to be comboed. It has as much range as Ike's Fair and is active on frames 9 through 12. If spaced well, this move can be safe on every character's shield. And if timed properly as you land, it can be safe against shield grabs. However, you should rely on your spacing to keep the offensive pressure up. Neutral air is Korn's fastest aerial as it's active on frame 6, and it has lingering hitboxes to disrupt nearby opponents. Because of this, it's a great follow-up attack after Fair as well as a reliable out-of-shield option. Nair is somewhat similar to Fair, except it has slightly less range and a backside hit with even less range. Also, it deals slightly less damage than Fair and has more end lag, which makes it less consistent for comboing than Fair. Up Air is arguably Korn's most versatile move, as it can function as a combo starter, juggling tool, or at high percentages, a kill move. It's active on frames 7 through 12, and aside from hitting grounded opponents at essentially the same speed as Fair, it has the same horizontal range as well. This means that the backside hitbox of Up Air is almost identical to Fair, and the two can be used interchangeably depending on which side your opponent is on. Up Air just has higher knockback, sends at a higher angle, and deals slightly more damage. Back Air is Korin's slower, high knockback aerial with some pretty impressive range. This attack hits on frame 13, but it's safe on shield and is often safe to throw out neutral due to the forward momentum boost it provides. Keep in mind that you can actually use this momentum boost when you're hit off stage to help recover. This attack is great for either getting stage control or getting early kills off stage or near the ledge. The best times to use back air are when your opponent is in the air, and especially when they're drifting toward you, as your momentum can allow you to stay near them if you miss. So with that in mind, this should almost always be your go-to move for edge guarding. Also, it's important to keep in mind that back air will reset your fall speed. This can allow you to fast fall before using it off stage without falling too low to recover. When you're on stage, it's almost always a good idea to input a fast fall as soon as the hitbox comes out. Korn's down air mainly functions as a situational counterattack due to its ability to change your momentum. It's active on frame 12 and is very committal, so it's most often used to punish your opponent's whiffed attacks after double jumping. This move is extra effective when you're in the air, as it can deal significantly more damage depending on how long you drag your opponent down for. After about 20% or so, this attack will start setting up for a tech chase, which can synergize very well with side special, but more on that later. If you're ever against a character with a poor vertical recovery, you can actually use this attack to gimp them by using it at the peak of your full hop, and then by buffering a double jump, you can still make it back to the ledge. Korn's jab hits on frame 5, and you can either use a jab combo or a rapid jab for extra damage. But honestly, you shouldn't be using Korn's jab too often as it's not as useful as other attacks such as down tilt. Down tilt also comes out in only 5 frames and can be safe on some character's shields if spaced well. What makes this move so good is that it pops your opponent up directly above you for combos. Depending on your opponent's fall speed, this will start true comboing into up tilt between 10 to 20%, and it will true combo into up air against most characters up to 90%. It can even true combo heavy characters up to as much as 140%. Up tilt is a frame 7 anti-air, which is often used as a combo extender. Simply put, the best time to use this move is when you don't have enough time to short hop up air, as it's active 3 frames sooner and hits slightly lower to the ground. Korn's forward tilt is very straightforward. It hits on frame 8 and gives you stage control. And if your opponent's at very high percentages, it could be used as a kill option. Dash attack has very situational uses. It's active on frame 12, which is slow compared to most dash attacks, and it's not even safe on shield despite crossing your opponent up. Because of this, it can only be useful as a tool to punish whiffs, techs, or air dodges, as it still deals 15.6% and puts your opponent in disadvantage. Korn's forward smash is very interesting, as it functions as either a powerful long-range smash attack or close-range shield trapping tool. The lance hit is active on frame 17 and is much stronger when hit at the tip. And due to the recent 8.0 buff, when this is spaced correctly, it's now safe against almost every character shield. Keep in mind that this attack can be angled and is generally most effective when used as a defensive landing trap. If you charge this attack, Korn's sword becomes a hitbox after 12 frames and is at an angle where it can cut off some low aerial approaches, but its most effective use is as a counter to shields. As long as you're close enough, this multi-hit will guarantee you a forward smash if they attempt anything out of shield or even wait too long. However, there is one way for your opponent to escape and most players have no idea about it. 
Basically, they need to rapidly nudge themselves away from you with Shield DI by repeatedly moving the control stick away. But because this would input a roll and thus get them hit, they need to hold B before doing so as it prevents them from inputting a roll no matter how quickly they move the control stick. The closer you are to them, the harder it is for them to escape, and if you're near the edge of a platform, it's actually impossible for them to escape. Up Smash is very situational as it's active on frame 13 and has a much thinner hitbox than Up Tilt. The main use for this attack is to call out your opponent for using a down air or similar attack as Korn ducks down before it hits, and like her other lance attacks, it deals more damage and knockback at the tip. Down Smash can be a powerful tool if used correctly. It hits on frame 13 and has a front and back hit that each have different properties. The front hit has slightly less range than forward tilt, but a bit more power, while the backside hit has slightly more range than forward tilt and is very strong when spaced correctly. The sour spot is much weaker though. You primarily want to use this attack for hard punishes, specifically when you're too close to land a tip or forward smash, and too far to use forward smash as multi-hit. And you always want to make sure you turn around if possible to hit with the backside hitbox as it can kill surprisingly early. Korn's throws are overall pretty straightforward, so I'll just go through them briefly. Forward throw deals about 8% and knocks them up and away, giving you stage control. Back throw deals about 10% and functions identically. Up throw and down throw each deal about 11% and each have the same amount of knockback. However, down throw launches a bit more forward, making it better for getting your opponent away from center stage, but worse for killing off the top. Up throw can start killing most characters around 155%, while down throw often does around 170. Korn's neutral special is Dragon Fang Shot, which shoots a projectile that stuns on hit and can be held afterward to charge a powerful chomp. The projectile for this move is actually very easy to react to, has a lot of end lag, and isn't high priority even when fully charged, making it a weak option in neutral. The only situation where it's sometimes useful is as a projectile when your opponent is off stage and you're too far away to edge guard. The main use for this move is to land the projectile at close range so you can hit them with a charged chomp, which deals a ton of damage and knockback. And because even an uncharged projectile takes 17 frames to start up, the only feasible way to land this in neutral is as an unexpected mix-up by jumping away and B-reversing it to punish whiffs or initial dashes. Korn's side special is Dragon Lunge. When on the ground, this causes Korn to hop forward with a little extra airspeed, then with either A or B, you can skewer to the ground with your lance. Lunging is generally preferable to short hopping when using this attack, as you can skewer to the ground at any time, or you can only do so on your way down after short hopping. In addition, your lance hits on frame 4 after lunging and frame 10 otherwise, however this can still be useful when full hopping as you can double jump before hitting the ground to stay safe. Keep in mind that you can actually hop over certain low projectiles with Dragon Lunge to punish. Dragon Lunge itself takes 4 frames before you can act, meaning you can buffer your skewer input to hit on frame 8. And depending on how high off the ground you are when you use skewer determines its effective range as well as whether you'll hit or pin your opponent. If you're near the peak of your hop, you'll hit your opponent with either the Sour Spot or Tipper, which is very good at killing off the side. And if you're closer to the ground, you'll pin them, leaving them unable to act until you pick an option. And once skewered, you have four options that can be selected with the control stick. Forward to kick forward, backward to kick back, up to jump, and either down or wait a few seconds to cancel. Whenever you pin an opponent, it's best to take the guaranteed hit with a forward kick, which comes out in 10 frames and is a powerful kill option off the top. However, if your opponent is too close to you, this may not hit, so you should opt for another option. One being a backward kick, which actually has two hitboxes. The first is weak, slightly in front of Korn, and hits on frame 6, and the second is similar to forward kick, but hits on frame 14. If they shield the lance hit, this option is great for punishing any panic rolls or to escape, as it can knock them away while putting you at a safe distance. Keep in mind that unless you see a clear opening, using these kicks offensively is generally predictable and unsafe. If you skewer without hitting your opponent or their shield, your best options are usually to jump or cancel the move. In general, jumping will allow you to act a bit sooner than canceling and has invulnerability on frames 2 to 7, giving you a small window to dodge an attack if needed. On certain stages, you can actually utilize this jump after skewering a wall to help you recover. And another interesting use for skewer is as a mix-up to get up from the ledge. If you drop the ledge and quickly double jump, you can use side special to potentially hit or pin your opponent and get back to the stage. And keep in mind that using this move while higher up will allow you to reach farther while still being over the ledge. If you weren't in range to hit them, you can cancel the move to reset the scenario and re-grab the ledge. Doing this often enough may condition your opponent to shield, which can allow you to safely double jump back to the stage. In general, Dragon Lunge is best used as either a quick and powerful mid-range punish, a defensive counterattack, or a tool for tech chases as it can either hit them directly or cover tech options with kicks. 
Korn's down special is Counter Surge. This move grants invulnerability on frame 6 and counters during frames 7 through 26. When triggered, Korn deals 20% extra damage to any nearby opponents and knocks them up and away, making this move extra deadly when triggered up high. Korn's up special is Dragon Ascent and it has three possible angles, 70 degrees, 45 degrees, and 90 degrees. This move can be interrupted by attacks and disjoints, so it's important to either recover quickly or wait to utilize its invulnerability, which takes place on frames 7 through 17. The hitbox becomes active on frame 18 and has decent knockback on the final hit, making it a strong mix-up option for securing early kills when your opponent is up high. But if you ever use this move offensively, make sure you're still able to drift to the ledge and preferably close enough to fast fall, so you can avoid being hard punished in case you don't hit them. In general, Korn's neutral is primarily composed of all their aerials plus side special, all of which can outrange most characters' attacks and potentially lead to huge combo strings. But because Korn isn't very mobile when compared to other sword characters, you need to put extra focus on finding clear openings to challenge your opponent's attacks and apply safe shield pressure to maximize your opportunities to get an advantage state where Korn really shines. Because of this, it's important to put extra focus in parrying when you're expecting a predictable attack. It's also important to be familiar with the timing of your forward air and up air, so you can consistently land with your sword nearly parallel to the ground. This can save you a few frames of end lag, which can make your approaches a little safer and your follow-ups easier to combo into. When approaching a grounded opponent, prioritize using landing fares because even if they shield it, you can often catch them acting out of shield by buffering or retreating short hop nair, which can create openings. It's important to always take note of how your opponent is reacting to their shield being hit. Many characters don't have a quick enough option to punish you before the follow-up nair, and the few that do can't react quickly enough to do so, so they could only punish you by relying on a read, which can be risky for them if you decide to shield instead. If you use this strategy often enough, most players will be conditioned to start holding shield after you fare. This can give you some interesting mix-up opportunities, such as empty hop into retreating side special, and you can still air dodge before landing. If you're confident that they'll hold shield, you could also quickly short hop over them, then fast fall behind them and charge a forward smash on their shield. Once your opponent is at too high of a percentage to be reliably comboed, it's often better to play more defensively with a bait and punish style by focusing more heavily on counterattacking their grounded approaches and landings with side special and forward smash, and challenging them with back air whenever they're in the air. Korn excels at keeping opponents in disadvantage state mainly through the use of up air, forward air, down tilt, and up tilt. I think the easiest way to understand Korn's advantage state is to first learn their base combo tree off forward air, and then how you can frame trap with down tilt and up air. And keep in mind that many of these combos off fair also apply to nair and up air, but at different percentages. For most characters between 0 to 20%, a landing fair can true combo into a short hop fair, and if you fast fall in time, you can true combo into either a down tilt or an up tilt depending on the character's fall speed and damage. If you can hit them with down tilt, remember this will still lead back into up tilt anyway. Between 20 to 40%, follow up your landing fare with a short hop fare, but don't buffer the attack. Waiting just a few extra frames will allow you to fast fall and true combo this into a full hop fare, and lastly, either a fourth fare or up air. Between 40 to 70%, if you're near center stage and want to rack up more damage, you can still true combo fare into up air to stay in a strong position. However, in that same percentage range, you can also combo into side special, which is especially strong near ledges. Make sure to practice your jump and or double jump timings to quickly find the right positions to land tippers, as it could take some getting used to. An alternative to this, which can work up to about 80%, is to combo into a raw or back air. This can also kill early near the ledge and is easier to land, but it won't kill quite as early as side special. One very powerful sequence in Korn's advantage state is the up air to down tilt frame trap loop. Basically, whenever your opponent is above you, you should play aggressive and pressure them with up air. This often forces them to either jump, where they'll have to land with one less resource, or air dodge, where you can fast fall and often punish them with a down tilt to combo into either up tilt or up air, and restart the sequence by going for another up air. This can lead to insanely long combo strings, however if your opponent has good air speed and inputs a directional air dodge, you may have to punish them with side special instead, which ends the loop but can potentially get a kill. Keep in mind that the sequence will only frame trap if your opponent has roughly 30% before the initial down tilt hits. However, this can be as early as 10% for floaty lightweights like Jigglypuff, or 50% for heavyweight fast fallers like King Dedede. It's important to practice buffering your turnaround down tilts after landing with up air, as there'll be situations where you'll need to turn around almost frame perfectly. There are tons of possible setups for ledge trapping, but I tend to gravitate toward only two. One being a simple short hop nair space near the ledge. This can cover all four ledge options and can often give you opportunities for follow-ups. The moment you see them pick any ledge option, short hop. If they get up or get up attack, simply time your nair and fast fall to hit them before they can shield. 
If they ledge jump, nair as soon as possible. And if they roll, time your nair to hit them with the end of its backswing. If your opponent is at high percent, you could potentially cover all their ledge options with kill moves, but you'll need to predict whether or not they'll jump as it's too fast to react to. First, face away from the ledge at a distance where your side special can tipper them for holding onto the ledge past their invincibility timer. If you predict that they'll jump, react with a full hop back air. Otherwise, be ready to react to a get up or a get up attack with a side special. And if they roll, you'll often have time to react with a neutral special. If you happen to be on a stage with platforms like Battlefield or Pokemon Stadium, you can bait your opponent to choose a regular getup by standing on the platform and react with a tip or side special. But keep in mind that this won't work on characters shorter than Mario. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them down below in the comment section and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time.